Welcome back to PCC 25. We're here with Jonathan Beckham, a partner at the law firm Ackerman LLP. Um, Jonathan, you're speaking on a panel, um, I think, later in a few days around energy and uh, kind of the, the lack of it for data centers, which I'm sure is you know, going to be a massive theme of, <laughs> of the few days that we're going to be spending here. Um, why don't you just kind of give us a quick intro into kind of like your role at Ackerman and, and what's up for discussion on that, on that panel in particular? Sure, sure. I'm a lawyer at uh, Ackerman and the uh, Digital Infrastructure Group and uh, we assist uh, a lot of data center operators and uh, as you mentioned, uh, energy, hopefully there's not going to be a lack of energy, but there certainly is a, a challenge that has arisen uh, in the United States and throughout the world with energy supply for data centers. You know, we all know about uh, the energy requirements of data centers to cool data centers, to keep the servers operating, uh, but you know, the U.S. And, and Northern Virginia in particular is a hub for data centers, it's the largest data center environment in the world, Northern Virginia. And several years ago, uh, you know, developers, they, they show up in, in, in Northern Virginia to develop a project and they got a notice from the utility company that, hey, we don't have any more power for, for you. Uh, so that led to sort of a diffusion of the industry throughout the United States. Now you have a number of other jurisdictions that have massive, massive data center focus and now Many of those jurisdictions have the same challenge that Dominion Power had in Northern Virginia, yeah. where power is a challenge. I, mean, I think we all know that story. Um, so our clients are confronted with that issue, and it's really played out in a number of ways in recent uh, recent months. Really, really over the last year, I think it's year or two, it's really come to a head. Um, so power is a challenge, um, yeah. and what we face is that. Uh, you know, in terms of even at the beginning stage of a data center, uh, site selection uh, is, uh, you know, at the site selection stage we're facing challenges. Uh, you know, we see providers, Jack, who want to enter a new enter an, an LOI uh, with a, a developer and owner, and they need to know right away, hey, are you going to have access to power at this yeah. site? Um, otherwise, they're wasting their time. So we see developers and operators investing a lot of time negotiating with utilities, talking to utilities, figuring out what power is available, and if the power is not available, you know, they're committing resources to build power, to uh, fund the utilities build, and um, you know, it's a new dynamic for data center providers. Yeah. I feel like that deepening of the relationship between the operators and the utilities is something that people are discussing a lot at the moment. So it's not enough to just say like, you know, we need X number of megawatts here now. You really have to like work with them and work out where's going to be easy for them to provision it and then try and build your site selection around that, right? Is that what you're seeing more, more of? In well, yes, but actually uh, there may not, the power may not be available. So then, then the question is, you know, hey, we like the site, uh, how do we bring power to the site? And that can require uh, several elements to bring power depending upon what's already there. You know, the, the easy answer is, hey, I, I, I need a substation. The substation is already there. The transmission lines are already there. But that may not be the case. So we are seeing cases where they're going to the utility and saying, we will rebuild the substation, bring a new substation, uh, we'll build the transmission lines, uh, you know, they, then they need to make sure that the power source is available as well. So in that case, you know, a data center project that may have been 300 million in the past for, you know, pretty substantial campus, now the cost is, could be $1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the utility will require a guarantee, so you have the developer and the data center owner negotiating over, you know, who's financing it, uh, you know, and, and like you said, with the utility, trying to figure out when it will be delivered. Yeah. Uh, the re are the resources there uh, for the, uh, the engineering and procurement work? The they're, they're, they're entering into a number of agreements that you know, may not have been an issue in the past with the data center. You're seeing interconnection agreements, construction and development agreements. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different, totally different it's a, dynamic. It's a rapidly shifting like environment, right? I think yeah. especially in the US with that kind of you know, uh, diaspora from North Virginia, if you want to call it that, and then the same issues popping up in other markets that are constrained oh, now as well. So absolutely. how are you, like, what's changed for you guys at Ackerman in terms of being able to support your clients with, like, the, some of these problems? Like, what are you doing more of to help them? Well, we've got, we're, we're a firm of many specialists, so some of our emphasis on specialization changes, for example, you know, with energy, uh, 
you know, in the U.S., given the tax change with the Inflation Reduction Act and the emphasis on renewable energy, you know, we have tax specialists who can work with clients uh, to make sure that those projects work, to make sure that the renewable energy component of the, the uh, of a project fits in and works nicely, and that you know we, we make the the investments uh, are structured properly. There's a proper structure to, to suit the tax credits. Um, so we also, um, you know, again, there's more emphasis on working with utilities and our power folks are involved. They have to have an understanding of FERC and Federal Energy Regulatory Commission regulations. Yeah. And so it's for us, it's a matter of navigating through those specializations, um, you know, working with clients who, you know, if they're in the state of Georgia, there's a particular uh, knowledge that you have to have of the uh, utilities there, of the cooperative uh, electric utilities there and how they operate. Um, so really it's for us a different emphasis on specialization, you know, making sure we have the resources to meet their, their needs. Yeah, we've seen a lot of um, a lot of like noise recently, and a lot of kind of partnerships being announced, even um, on like the nuclear energy side, and even more recently the geothermal side mm -hmm. of things. What yeah. do you see as the kind of like path forward for those power sources when it comes to working with the data center industry? Uh, all of those are welcome. All of those would be lovely. However, you know we understand you know there is a political dynamic, and with nuclear in particular, mm -hmm. uh, micronuclear would solve a lot of issues, uh, but the demand is now, these projects are on the table, and I think there's some concern that you know, nuclear and some of the other technologies, they're not going to be ready in time. Yeah. So I mean, we're operating in a, an environment where time is of the essence, and those may be helpful in the future, but there is yeah. such a, a rush. I think even with the Google one, right, which was one of the first ones they were saying it's unlikely to come online before 2029, so right. definitely more of like yeah. a medium, long-term yeah. kind of uh, response there. So yeah. lots yeah. of work for you to do in those five years <laughs> yeah. to help plug that gap. Yeah, um, definitely issue. Well, thanks very much, Jonathan. Cheers for chatting us oh, today. Yeah. And um, yeah, thanks for everyone for yeah. watching. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Good talking to you. <laughs>